Hi guys, in the last lecture we studied about the starting of induction motor. In starting we saw the problem with the starting of induction motor is that I starting is high and starting torque is low. Okay, but we need to have high starting torque so that the motor can start under loaded condition so that the starting torque can exceed the load torque and motor can accelerate. But at the same time, we need to have a low starting current so that the windings of the rotor are not damaged. So we saw there are certain methods by which we can reduce the starting current of the induction motor. The first method that we saw was direct online starting in which we apply the full rated voltage across the stator winding. Then starting current torque by full load torque was given by starting current by full load current square into S full load. Okay, then we saw the reduced voltage starting method in which we first of all saw stator reactance in which we use potential divider to reduce the voltage at the stator terminals. Then starting torque by full load torque was given as x square i starting by i full load square s full load. Okay, so here the x was X was X was the potential division ratio that we applied across the stator winding that was implemented using the potential divider. Then we saw auto transformer. In auto transformer, we kept the transformation ratio one is to X. Then starting torque by full load torque was given by X square i starting by i full load square s full load but here one advantage was that i starting was reduced to x square times the i short circuit so that way there was high reduction in current for the same reduction in the torque but here the starting current was x times i short circuit so here the factor was x coming that is if x is 0.5 then the starting current became half but in case of auto transformer due to x square ratio, the starting current became 0.25. And the last method we saw star delta starter in which we connected the windings in star connection at the time of starting and under running condition, it was in delta. Here starting torque by full load torque was one by three. I starting by I full load square into S full load. Here the starting current became 1 by 3 times short circuit current. Okay, so these were the methods that were used to start the induction motor so as to reduce the starting current. In this lecture, we will study about the speed control of the induction motor. The thing is, whenever we are running a motor, the desirable characteristic is the variable speed. That is, I must be able to control the speed of motor so that I can increase the speed whenever I want and I can decrease the speed at will. Because suppose a motor is used to drive an automobile an automobile is always driven at a variable speed that is whenever a turn is coming then you will slow down the speed and whenever it is a free road then you will increase the speed. So we need to have variable speed. So speed control is needed for variable speed drive. Okay, so that we can have a variable speed drive. Now we know the rotor speed is given by ns into 1 minus s. So there are two parameters on which the rotor speed depends. One is the synchronous speed, other is the slip. So there are two methods to control the speed of induction motor by controlling the synchronous speed or by controlling the slip. So first technique is called as slip control. In slip control, there are various techniques. One is the voltage control. Other is the rotor resistance control other is the rotor EMF injection so these three are under slip control next is your synchronous speed control in this we can have frequency control we can have pole changing as we can change the number of poles to change the synchronous speed or we can have cascading cascading of two induction motor 
Synchronous speed is given by 120 into F by P. So we can change frequency or we can change the number of pools. So these two categories are defined or these two categories are there for the speed control of the induction motor. Okay. So in this lecture, we'll first start with the slip control technique of speed control of the induction motor. But the desirable characteristic whenever we are controlling the speed of any motor is that torque should remain constant though we can have any speed. So the most ideal condition is when the load torque remains same. Now under voltage control method, the first under slip control technique is the voltage control. This method is applicable to both squirrel cage as well as wound rotor. Okay. But the other methods like R2 control, rotor resistance is only applicable for wound rotor because external resistance can only be connected in wound rotor. Similarly, rotor EMF injection is only applicable for wound rotor. Here, this method is applicable to both. Pole changing is only applicable to squirrel cage because number of poles are fixed in case of wound rotor. And here, cascading. So first motor in this case, we should be slip ring induction motor or wound rotor induction motor. Okay, the other can be squirrel cage as well as wound rotor. Now, when we are talking about the voltage control technique, when motor is under running condition, we know the slip is low. For low slips, we saw the approximate expression that the torque was proportional to SV square by R2. Since resistance is being kept fixed, only voltage is variable. So if we say that the torque is constant, so we can say SV square is constant. That means S1 V1 square is S2 V2 square. So S2 by S1 will be equal to V1 by V2 whole square. The thing is here we cannot increase the voltage beyond the rated value. So we have to reduce the voltage. V2 is less than V1 because V cannot be greater than V rated. This is not possible. Okay. Otherwise the insulation of the machine may get damaged. So we can never increase the voltage beyond the rated value. Since V2 is less than V1, that means S2 is greater than S1. Now the rotor speed is given by NS into 1 minus S. And since the slip is increasing, the rotor speed will reduce. So this method is used to obtain the speeds below rated speed. Okay, rated speed will be obtained at rated voltage. And since we are decreasing the voltage below the rated voltage, the slip is increasing above the rated slip. So the speed will be below the rated speed. Okay. But what is the problem with this method? See, in case of induction motor, the rotor current is given by E2 over under root R2 by S square plus X2 square. Since slip is increasing, impedance will reduce because this term will reduce. If impedance reduces, starting current increases or the rotor current increases. So by this method, the rotor current will increase. If the rotor current increases, then what is the problem that the, there will be high current in the rotor winding, which can damage the winding of the rotor. For exact calculation, suppose slip is small. So I can say I is approximately how much V1 S by R2. Now S is proportional to inversely proportional to V square. So I is inversely proportional to one by R2 V. If V is reducing, I will increase. Okay. Because here one can argue that EMF or the voltage is also reducing. If impedance is reducing and voltage is reducing, that means there should be no effect on the current. But when we do exact calculation, we see that the current is coming to be inversely proportional to voltage. That means as the voltage is reduced below the rated value, the current will increase above the rated value. So you cannot use this method for long term. That is for long term or long time, you cannot keep this controlling the speed using the voltage control technique. Otherwise, high current will be flowing in the rotor conductors for a longer period of time and high current for long period of time, high losses, that means high 
heating this is the heat so if time is large then the heat will also be large which can damage or which can melt down the rotor winding so it will not affect much in case of squirrel cage induction motor because the rotor is rigid that is it is very rough and tough kind of thing it does not get damaged easily but in case of wound rotor it can easily get damaged because wound rotor has windings on the rotor terminals next method is rotor resistance control this is only applicable for wound rotor induction motor okay so just now we saw when slip is low torque is proportional to sv square by r2 now if we change r2 we with the slip will change in case the torque is constant here we are keeping voltage as constant so s by r2 should remain constant so s1 by r2 one should remain equal to s2 by r2 two if we add external resistance that means r2 two will be greater than r2 one which implies s2 will be greater than s1 and rotor speed is given as ns into 1 minus s since slip is increasing the rotor speed will reduce so that means rotor speed reduce below the rated speed or below base speed in case of dc also we defined the base speed that is the rated speed so here this method can be used to obtain the speed below the base speed or below the rated speed of the motor okay by connecting the external resistance as the resistance is increased the slip will also increase because by this relation slip is proportional to rotor resistance okay that's what i told you that in case of wound rotor you can connect external resistance for starting because starting torque is proportional to r2 so if we increase r2 starting torque will increase but if this resistance is kept in the rotor circuit even after starting of the motor then this can be used for speed control of the induction motor so high starting torque is desirable as well as this resistance is useful for speed control below the rated speed but what are the problems with this method is see there will be losses i square into r external these are additional losses okay i square r2 will be always be there but in r external also there will be additional copper loss due to this additional loss efficiency will reduce okay efficiency is less due to this additional loss heat will also be produced which can damage the winding of the machine due to high heating okay and since eta is reduced with variable speed so we cannot vary the speed much okay since we cannot vary the speed much otherwise the efficiency of the motor will go down very fast like efficiency can go down from 90% to 70% for wide range of speed control so here we can only have narrow range of speed control because for wide range you need wide control over the slip the slip should be varied in high quantity or the slip should have large changes but if the slip has large changes then efficiency will also have larger changes why if slip suppose change from 0.1 to 0.5 that is 5 times that means since slip is proportional to resistance resistance will be changed from r to 5r due to 5x change in resistance the heat will also be changed by 5 times and efficiency will go down very fast okay so if you want to change slip by a large amount resistance will change by an equal amount so 10x change in slip will cause 10x change in resistance which will cause 10x change in losses which will cause decrease in the efficiency but the decrease in efficiency will not be 10x okay remember this it will not be same ratio as the losses or as the slip okay so these are the disadvantages of the rotor resistance control method of the induction motor speed control let's move on to next method rotor emf injection see in case of wound rotor induction motor we have slip rings if we can connect an external emf source okay which has a frequency sf why sf because this emf source 
is superimposed on the induced EMF in the rotor. If you want to add two phasors, if you want to add two voltages or two currents, they must have the same frequency. So this external EMF or the injected EMF EI must have a frequency of SF. Now this external EMF can have the same phase as well as opposite phase to the induced EMF. If it has same phase, total EMF will be E2 plus EI. If it has opposite phase, it will be E2 minus EI. Now just now we saw when slip is low, torque is proportional to SV square by R2. That is for constant torque, SV square is constant. So if it is in the same phase, that means the voltage is increasing. So slip will reduce. If it is in the opposite phase, voltage reduces, so slip will increase. So here we can reduce the slip as well as we can increase the slip. If slip reduces, then rotor speed, which is NS1 minus S, will increase. If slip increases, the rotor speed, which is NS1 minus S, will reduce. If this reduces, which means it is below rated speed or below base speed, it is above base speed. So here we can have both type of control, below base speed control as well as above base speed control by controlling the phase of injected EMF with respect to the induced EMF at the rotor terminals. That is called as rotor EMF injection method. It is only applicable for wound rotor because in wound rotor we have the slip ring terminals available on which I can connect an external EMF source. But in case of slip rings, no such facility is available. Sorry, in case of squirrel cage, hence we cannot use this method for squirrel cage induction motor speed control. Okay. So these are the three methods by which we can control the speed or we can control the slip. So remember, in first method, voltage control method, we were decreasing the voltage, so slip was increasing, hence it was used for below rated speed control. In rotor resistance control, we increased the resistance, so slip increased. That was also below rated speed. But in this case, we can inject the EMF in same or the opposite phase. So we can have above rated speed and below rated speed control of the induction motor. Next is by controlling the frequency. So first method is pole changing. Now if you see here, there are four conductors shown. One is carrying the current cross dot cross dot. Now due to cross by right hand rule, if you keep your thumb in the direction of cross that is inwards, then the direction of magnetic field will be clockwise. Point your thumb inwards, then see the direction of your fingers. It is clockwise. Due to dot, it is anti-clockwise. So here the net field is coming downward. Here it is going anti-clockwise, here it is clockwise. So net field is upwards. Here again, downwards. So this should be north pole, this should be south, this should be north. That means between any two conductors carrying current in opposite direction, there is always a magnetic pole induced. How I am deciding north and south pole? If the magnetic field is away from the pole, it is north pole. If it is towards the pole, it is south pole. So if two windings carry current in opposite direction, always a pole will be induced between them. Now if you want to change the poles, what to do is, now I have changed the direction of current in this winding. So these both are carrying the current in same direction, that is, field will be here field will be anti-clockwise here also it will be anti-clockwise so they will cancel each other so here net field will be zero if there is zero net field there is no pole but here field is downward here field is how it will be this should be clockwise so here field is upwards so here it will be north here it will be south so here I have reduced or removed this south pole. Okay, so I can change the number of poles. So by changing the number of poles, I can directly reduce the poles to half of the initial value. If poles become half, synchronous speed, which is 120 F by P, if pole P dash is equal to P by 2, NS dash is equal to 2 times NS. So synchronous speed can be made double then rotor speed which is directly proportional to synchronous speed it also increases so this is for above base speed control or above rated speed control so this way we can control the speed of the induction motor above the rated speed 
by controlling the synchronous speed here I can change or reduce the number of poles to half and what to remember in this method is if two windings carry current in opposite direction there will be a pole between them if they carry current in same direction there is no pole so we can reduce the poles to half and thus we can double the synchronous speed so let us summarize what we learnt in this lecture here we saw that the rotor speed was dependent on two parameters synchronous speed and the slip so there was two methods by controlling the slip or by controlling synchronous speed so first we saw voltage control here we said SV square is constant so as voltage reduces slip increases so NR reduces that is it is used for below rated speed control but what was the problem that the rotor current was increasing which can be harmful or it can damage the rotor winding if it can damage the rotor winding we cannot use this for longer periods of time then we saw rotor resistance control here we said that S by R2 is constant so slip is proportional to rotor resistance so if rotor resistance increases slip increases then speed reduces but what was the problem copper loss increase which increase the heat of the machine and efficiency reduces the next method that we saw after rotor resistance control was EMF injection here we said if injected EMF is in same phase with a induced GMF that is the voltage increases that the means the slip will reduce because SV square is constant if slip reduces that means NR will increase if it is in opposite phase then voltage reduces so slip should increase that is NR should reduce so it can be used for below and above rated speed control and the last one we saw was the pole changing in this we reverse the winding current to reduce the poles to half due to which the synchronous speed became twice the initial value so the rotor speed also increases so this can be used for above rated speed control so these are the four methods that we have discussed in this lecture in the next lecture we will discuss the other methods of speed control as well as how to bring the induction motor to a stop that is the breaking of induction motor that we will cover in the next lecture